Oh, that looks like a great program. Oh, can I see that? Sure. I know some of these composers. How about that, huh? <laughs> yeah, you see anything you like, Jess? Just about everything, especially the Gershwin. It's called Gershwin Under the Stars. You'd like to hear that, huh? Who wouldn't? Okay, it's a deal. I'll get the tickets. Oh, Dan, I didn't realize you... Well, you will go with me, won't you? Just for old time's sake? Of course I will. Thank you. I'd love to. <laughs> For Beethoven myself. Not Beethoven, for a copy of the Lieutenant Kiji suite to be exact. I know. I... We'll be going to see that very soon. Oh. You got tickets for that? Yeah, I've had them for days. You're going, aren't you? I wouldn't miss it. Kiji is one of my favorite composers. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning, eh? Seems so happy. <laughs> I'm in a little Hi. crazy. Watch out, here comes our boss. Good morning, Good Dr. Morning, Dr. Uh, maybe we should start calling him chief. Congratulations, Dr. Weber. Yeah, congratulations, sir. Very happy for you, Rick. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, it's uh, time to go to work. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Drake. Yes, sir. As soon as you're free, would you come to my office, please? We have something to talk about. You are not through for the day. <laughs> Wish I was. I'm about ready to drop. Oh, gee, you look fresh as a daisy. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I wish I felt fresh as a daisy. We uh, were out rather late last night, you know. Mm, mm. It was worth it, wasn't it? I had a great time. Yeah, me too. Like the song says, could have danced all night. Could have danced all night. Well, it's a good thing I didn't because I had emergency surgery this morning. I know, little Karen Benko. I just read the report. Yeah, she's doing real well. She's a sweet little girl. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She's been here three days and everybody's already in love with her. Uh-huh, and you, super doctor, did a terrific job. It says so right there. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, she's okay. Noah, what's mm. the problem? No problem. Not with me, anyway. Apparently, our uh, acting chief of staff is one with the problem. Why? With you? Did something go wrong? No. Surgery went beautifully. Apparently, he's very upset with me. I've been summoned to his office to face the music. Why? You just did a fantastic operation on a little girl and saved her life. What's he upset about? Technicality. What technicality? It's, no, it's rule book stuff, you know, it's, I mean, it's just, sometimes you just don't have time to read the book, you know. Don't worry about it. I'm not. Dr. Robert Troutman, Dr. Robert Troutman, Yes. You want to see me? Just come in, Doctor. I'm sure you know what this concerns, so why don't we get straight to the point? Karen Benko. Yes, I had a decision to make. I realize that, Doctor. I had to operate. Because I know you had to operate. I think your timing is what was off. You started operating before you had the consent form signed. I spoke to her parents on the phone. It's not the same thing. They signed the release as soon as they got to the hospital. Doctor, you had already started the operation. In fact, the assisting nurse told me that you had started closing by the time they got to the hospital. And they were very pleased to hear the operation went well. Yes, but what if they hadn't been pleased? What if, heaven forbid, something had happened to the child? Do you think they'd sign the consent forms then? Dr. Weber, I was concerned about the child, not some hospital form that had to be filled out. Medicine has a personal as well as a practical side. Doctor, I agree with you on that. Believe me, I do. However, in this particular instance, I think you confused the issues. I think you got them mixed up. Now, I would like an explanation. Karen, the, uh, the little girl, came to the hospital three days ago. She had a bad fall down some stairs. I wasn't sure how much damage had been done. So I treated her, and I was monitoring her. I got to know her parents very well, and I think I understood what Mr. and Mrs. Benko wanted for their daughter. Oh, you did? Yes. And they trusted me implicitly. No doubt. Surgery wasn't necessary. 
until the middle of last night. She started bleeding internally. I had to operate, and I would have operated even if I hadn't been able to reach her parents by phone because the child's life is more important than some hospital form. Doctor, I agree with you again on that point. However, this was not a life and death situation. Yes, surgery was necessary. Yes, the spleen had to come out. Yes, there was internal bleeding. But at no point was there any information available that it would be disastrous to her health if the operation was held off for an hour or two. Dr. Weber, with all due respect, yes, she was my patient and I am responsible for her. Doctor, the hospital is responsible no matter who operates. Now, what do you think consent forms are for? And why do parents have to sign consent forms for their children? Why? All right, okay. The child is fine. Nothing happened. But what if something had happened? At worst, the child could have died. If not, maybe they would have found out that the operation was not necessary. They could what? sue you and the hospital for having placed their daughter under unnecessary risk. Listen, Dr. Weber. No. Doctor, I'd like you to listen to me. And one time, I'm going to say this, and one time only, never in the future do you repeat your actions of last night unless it is a life and death situation, unless minutes are involved, not hours. Now, did I make myself very clear? Yes, Dr. Weber. Very clear. Good. Well, hello. Hi, Rose. What is the new chief of staff doing here for lunch? I don't usually eat at the hospital. I have to come by the clinic. Well, and are they managing without you? I don't even think they know I'm not there. Hello, Rick. Heather, hi. Heather, would be, you be so kind as to take care of our distinguished young doctor? Rose. Well, certainly. You sway to your table, the sir. Ladies, I can find my own way to the table, please. I like the uh, daily special, whatever it is, and all the mayonnaise if it has it, okay? Thank you. Wow. Sounds like the good doctor's had a bad day already. Hmm. I don't think he'd turn down a cup of tea. Heather, would you do me a favor and take this over to him? And while you're at it, take one for yourself, take a break. He might, he might want the company. You really think so? Yeah, I think so. It's not that busy right now, anyway. Well, if you don't think he'd mind. No, I don't think so, not at all. I can't get these untangled. There you go. I'll untangle them. <laughs> Thank you. And tell him his lunch is on the way. All right. Here, you might want this. Thanks. Here you go, Rick. Rose thought you might want this right away. Thank and you. she also told me to tell you that your meal's on the way. Thanks, Heather. She put me on a break now, so if you'd like a little company, I could join you. You seem kind of down. Well, if, if you'd rather be alone. Heather, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm just a million miles away. I really am. Look, if you want to have lunch alone, I can understand it. No, please. Please stay. I... Uh... Please sit down. All right. Just not in the best shape right now, that's all. It hasn't been a good day. Oh, well, you seem a little preoccupied. Yeah, well, I had a I had a thing at the hospital with the doctor. I had to take him down a few pegs, and I hate doing that. <laughs> really bothers me. Well, acting as chief of staff can really be a strain sometimes. Well, I had to do what I did. But it was a confrontation, and the kind of confrontation I don't like. Just let me wipe down. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sorry, I'm sure you do. You've had several of your own, haven't you? Lately. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Well, your little scene with Anne the other day, I... Anne told me about it. I see. Well, I've never heard exactly what happened from your side. Would you uh, care to tell me what happened? Well, I don't blame Anne. I mean, she must feel awfully guilty about taking Jeff away from me. About taking my son and my husband we away from me. We are not talking about blame. I really don't feel we are. No? No. Well, it sounded that way to me from the tone of your voice. I'm trying to find out what happened the other night. That's all, Heather. Just Why? what happened. I mean, what difference would it make if I tried to tell you? No matter what I say, you and Joe and everyone else refuse to see my side of things. That's not true. You keep telling me not to live in the past. And when I try not to, you make me. We're talking about something that just happened. No, we're not. You're still hanging my past over my head. 
No matter how hard I try to get on with my life, you still keep bringing it back up to me. Now, I'm trying to be a normal person. I know I was a terrible person. I know I did a lot of horrible, dreadful, unexcusable things. But now I just want to leave a normal life again. Maybe I'm dreaming. But I want a husband and children. I just want to live somewhere with someone who loves me. Is that so much to ask? Mind if I join you? Joe. Hello, Joe. No, go right ahead. Here, take my seat. Rose needs some help at the counter anyway. I trust you heard that. Couldn't help it. I get you to me, too. What? Heather's dream? No. Yeah, all of it, I don't know. I, as soon as I know that Heather is one thing, something else, some other facet of her opens itself up to me. I... I think she's a lot more complicated than anybody has ever figured. I wouldn't kid yourself at all. I don't care how much sweet talk you get out of her. I, I don't trust her. I don't think I ever will. People can change, Rick. Not Heather. I really don't feel that way. She claims to love her son and Jeff. The fact is that she tricked Jeff into marrying her, and she sold her own son. Sold him. Sold him? That's right. As though he were some commodity, some piece of furniture. Now, to sell your own son, if that's not being some kind of monster, I don't know what is. Well, she made a very good point here, too. And it's not fair to judge her now for what she did in the past. Did you just say that to me? Are you changing sides? I, I, I don't believe it. I'm not taking sides. We... Well, it sure sounds like it, Joe. Now, I would hate to see Heather do to you or any other man what she did to my brother. 